Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin, and welcome back to another LEGO Harry Potter set review. I can't believe I have this set in front of me. Unfortunately, I don't have the original box, but I do have the instructions, which we'll look at momentarily. But today, we're going to be looking at set number 4757 Hogwarts Castle. This set includes 928 pieces and originally retailed for $89.99 back in April of 2004. Now this was the biggest set to release for the Prisoner of Azkaban wave of sets. It's really, really impressive for the time period. One thing that I have to mention right off the bat is that this set has a number of recolored parts. If you don't know, 2004 was the time that we saw the switch from the yellow to the light flesh tone. We also saw new versions of the light gray and dark gray colors as well as brown. So this is really a revolutionary set when it comes to a lot of the different colors that LEGO started using. You have some interesting building techniques and I guess some interesting interiors to this particular set that were just kind of unexpected when I was researching more about it. But I guess to get us started, we might as well take a look at the rather rumpled up and not great looking instruction booklet that I got when I bought this for $80 on eBay. Yes, you heard that right. I bought this set for $80. It was only missing like two or three parts that I was able to order easily off Bricklink. Here's a look at the front or what the front of the box should look like right there with your Prisoner of Azkaban version of Harry and also your very nice Prisoner of Azkaban Harry Potter logo at the top that blue color scheme that you're going to see a lot within these 2004 era Lego Harry Potter sets. Flipping us to the back, you get a pretty nice layout right here, or at least like a trans clear layout of some of the other sets available at the time period. As we flip forward into the back of the instructions, you get a quick win information page, which is nothing special, and you get some alternate builds for this particular set, which I always find really interesting to see that Lego did this back in the day. And there we go in much better sized look of all the sets available. As I said, I have reviews for these two, as well as the smaller one up at the top. I would like to get all of these at some point. Eventually, I'll end up finding them. We have some more interesting alternate builds right here, especially this one I think is really interesting. I would like to maybe try and do some of these someday. It is on my bucket list to probably try and do this with some of the 2001-2002 sets as well. And then we have some details of how the set should actually look, which we'll get into in the review. Now one other thing that I did want to mention when it comes to the instructions for this set is the fact that we have from the very front the light flesh tone versions of the figures, but when we flip down here, or actually you can see this a lot better down here, that we have the yellow flesh tone versions and using like the older color schemes. I think that's really interesting that there was that minor switch and there is another really cool thing when it comes to Dumbledore, which we'll talk about when we actually look at his character when it comes to their decision between switching the flesh tones between the regular one that we know and love today for licensed themes and then the old yellow style. Looking at our very first minifigure included, of course we have to get the boy who lived himself, Harry Potter, in this set. This version of Harry is exclusive because we don't get a cape. Comes with one accessory, that being a black stick for his wand, which I think the wand coloration within the set is just really odd, which we'll get to in a moment when we look at Ron and Hermione. We get the new dark gray for the time period right there. The torso print we'll see continue into 2007 right there, which we'll see it also within those Goblet of Fire sets. No back printing, only the front printing when it comes to that Gryffindor style. You can see a little bit of gold and a little bit of that dark red right there, that little streak from the bottom and also for the tie. When it comes to the facial expression, it's the same print that we saw back in the year 2001. Just placed on this light flesh tone, you don't get a double-sided facial expression. Here's just a better look at that. You can see the scar in the glasses. And of course, you get the same hairpiece that we saw way back in 2001, as well in that plain black color. Next, looking at Harry's friend Ron Weasley, we get the same exact outfit that we see for Harry right there. Again, that torso piece will be used through 2007. For the wand, we get a light gray stick piece, which I find rather odd as well. When it comes to the facial expression, it's the same one that we saw back in 2001, just on that lighter flesh tone. And we also get a new color for the hair piece. We get a brighter orange compared to the orange that we saw back in the 2001 through 2003 sets. And here's a look again, just showing that there is no back printing for this particular character. 
Now, unlike Harry and Ron, we get a new torso piece for Hermione that features the Time Turner. I would love to see LEGO do this torso again in the future. Maybe we'll get lucky in the Summer Wave. I'm pretty sure the, the list is supposed to leak sometime before I want to put out this video. One thing that I think is really odd, again, is the color of the wand. We get a dark gray wand, which matches the color of her outfit. I, I don't know what LEGO was thinking there. It's just kind of weird and odd. And we do get the colors of the wand, and they should know the colors of the wand from just the previous film. So I don't know what's happening here, why she has this dark gray stick piece. It's just kind of weird and odd to me. When it comes to the facial expression, again, same one that we saw back in the 2001 wave, right there, just on the flesh tone color and then we get a brand new color for the hair piece for the time period that new brown right there which I also really like getting that hair piece in that regular brown color and you can take a look from the back again just to show that we don't get any back printing and for our last student minifigure we have Draco Malfoy who is also exclusive due to the arrangement of parts when it comes to the torso print for Draco's figure, this is the same print for the torso that we saw back in 2002 within that one Quidditch set that I've yet to review. I'll be reviewing that sometime, probably around the summertime, because I, I think we'll probably end up seeing another Quidditch set in the summer wave. We get one accessory of a black broomstick. We have the light flesh tone for the hands compared to the yellow that we saw on that previous figure. You have the regular green for the outfit Slytherin colors right there. Get that green cape underneath there which I'll flip over just to show again that we don't get any back printing because they didn't really do that back in the day. And then for the facial expression same one from back in the 2001 through 2003 wave just on that lighter flesh tone and you also get that sandy color for the hair piece which I would love to see them use again in the future instead of that yellow that is just terribly wrong for Draco. Now for the minifigure that most of you are probably watching this video for, we have Professor Sybil Trelawney, who is exclusive with brand new prints for the skirt piece, the torso, as well as the head piece. We also get the hat in a brand new and exclusive color for this set. This is, I suppose, kind of based off her book appearance, because I don't know if they would have had the reference material, and it definitely does not look like her character within the film. They definitely have done a lot better job, say, in 2018, and now even in 2022. I'll be doing a comparison sometime next month. But for the time period, I think that this character is really interesting. I don't think it's really worth the price that it's going for right now. When it comes to, like, the connection between the skirt and the torso piece, I think that works fine. And the facial expression, I just think, is just kind of odd. It doesn't really look like Professor Trelawney to me. You know, to be completely honest, I think it's really missing like that, that hair piece that we saw within 2018. Again, I'll be doing a comparison somewhere down the line. When it comes to the skirt piece, you just get the regular studded area there, unlike the newer skirt pieces. And here's just a better look at that hat piece again in that brand new color that we'll also see for your Dumbledore minifigure in a second. And probably the other most desirable figure included in the set has to be this brand new version of Albus Dumbledore. We get that new light gray color for the hair and beard, and we also get that brand new purple for the outfit compared to the purple that we saw, say, back in 2001-2002. But you can see a comparison between the prints. The prints are very, very similar. They are supposed to be the same exact prints, just on those newer colors. The cape piece for this particular version of Dumbledore is exclusive in this color and only comes on this particular figure. You can take a look from the back. Again, seeing that long hair piece from the back. And also the regular beard piece. Again, this was its first appearance in that light gray color. And we can also remove the beard piece to take a better look at the torso prints, where you'll notice that we have the yellow flesh tone for the chest area that we saw back in the 2001-2002 versions of Dumbledore, which I find really odd that they decided to keep that. I mean, they definitely could have printed the light flesh tone. Maybe they couldn't do that at the time period because originally this was, I think, a last minute change where they gave us the flesh tone for this licensed theme compared to the yellow look that you'll see again within the instructions. Facial print should be the same one that we saw back in that 2001-2002 wave just on the light flesh tone. And I actually think it looks really good on this particular headpiece. You know, again, it's just kind of weird seeing that bare chest right there in yellow. Again, most people will have this covered up by the beard. I just think it's just really odd and 
interesting to see how this figure turned out like that. And wrapping up our minifigure selection, we have one of two Dementors from Azkaban included in this set. You'll also see them appear within the series Black Escape, as well as the regular and motorized versions of the Hogwarts Express from the time period. You get this pretty nice felt soft cape piece, which I really like this felt style when it comes to the capes. Of course, they do get ruined pretty easily unfortunately, which is annoying. But when it comes to the style of these capes, I actually really like them compared to, say, the capes that we see for the regular minifigures at the time period, and I think LEGO has noticed that we like those felt style capes a lot more. You can see underneath the body that we have this sand green look for, like, the skeleton body of the Dementor. We also have that pogo stick piece that we'll later see return on other versions, say, in 2010. We also get these movable arms, which you'll also see on like certain skeletons during the time period, so you can actually move these in quite a nice 360 degree angle there. And of course, removing the hood piece, you can take a better look at the facial expression there, where you have the little sucking hole right there where you can perform the Dementor's kiss. You can also turn that right around just to see that we only get the printing from the front of that, and also you get a regular like Star Wars hood piece being used in that dark gray color, which I'm pretty sure was brand new for the time period. And again, here's just a look from the very back of the Dementor, showing off that cape right there. I really love that cape. Very nice accessory to go along. I don't know if the sand green is really the right color for these guys, but I mean, it's nice and nostalgic and goes along with the sand green that you also see in the castle. Now, when it comes to the builds for this set, we get five different builds. The first build for this set is for the main clock tower right here. You get the two separate attachments, which we'll show separately. You get the Gryffindor Tower over here, and then you also get this smaller gate, which we're going to start with as it being the smallest build. So looking at the smallest build included for the gatehouse, you get a pretty simple color scheme of that light gray, dark gray, a little bit of black right there for the gates, and also, of course, your common tan that you're going to see a lot within Hogwarts Castle. You have some small little lanterns over here using those translucent red cylinder pieces there. You also get the tap piece, which I think is interesting. From the very back, you get the clip piece connection, so you can actually open and close the gates to Hogwarts, which I think is interesting. I mean, there isn't anything too special there. I would have liked to see maybe like a lock or something, because it's kind of disturbing that there isn't really anything protecting it. Though technically, what is supposed to be protecting the gate is that you can place your two Dementors in this general area. Again, something that I have to mention when it comes to LEGO back in the day is that this build is not exactly stable. When it comes to pushing down pieces, a lot are pretty easy to actually break off, especially like these parts down here. Of course, you're going to have this on a stable floor area. I mean, the base, I think it's fine. It works well, but this particular build does really like to fall apart easily if you are playing around with it. Next, moving on to Gryffindor Tower, working our way from the bottom and moving our way up. First, we have the ripped portrait of the fat lady here, where the fat lady is seemingly missing. Um, I would have liked to see maybe another portrait somewhere that featured the fat lady. I think that would have been really interesting to see as another inclusion, especially considering we have those moving staircases, which I mean, don't even really work the way that I would want them to in the first place, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But looking at this area, you have an area where you can actually place one of your minifigures and spin them around and place them within the common room. But from the very back of this door, we also get another little extra special detail of the Monster Book of Monsters book, which I actually think turned out nice. I mean, it should be brown instead of this tan color, but I think LEGO did a pretty nice job representing it overall. You even get some printing on the spine. And from the very bottom of the book, you can open it up. There isn't anything inside, though you can pretend to chomp, chomp, chomp if you really want to. Moving up a bit, again, we get those lanterns using those translucent red cylinder pieces, and we also get these cups down here, these goblets in black. We get another one of those lion head pieces there in light gray, which is a pretty nice color to get that in. Again, moving up a little bit to like the dormitory level, we get an exclusive print on this shield piece, which actually is not exclusive. It previously came back in the 2001 version of the Hogwarts Castle, so that's pretty interesting to see that return. I really like the windows over here. And also from the sides, again, you can just take a look 
from the sides over here. And as we move up the level, you can see from the top level, we get another big window right there. A lot of the curves, a lot more of that sand green roofing that we're going to see a lot of. The one thing that I actually really like about this one is that we actually have our very first instance of the dark gray being used for the roofs, which we'll see a lot more when it comes to the clock tower over there. But from the very top, we get some of these roof pieces, which we get two of these included in this set. This particular piece only comes in this color in one other Hogwarts set, that being the 2007 version of Hogwarts Castle. So that's pretty cool to see that we get them in both of those sets. And another really interesting thing from the very top here is that we get that dark gray flag, which I find also rather interesting. It's something just odd that you normally wouldn't really see within Hogwarts Castle. Now moving us back down to the bottom to take a better look at the interiors, we can take a look from the very bottom where we're supposed to have the common room, which has a table that can actually be slid off to the side using a spinny plate. That also reveals this barrel that happens to have nothing in it. I don't know why. Though we get this table that features a quill and some ink. You get two of these, I'm pretty sure, in this set. That Indian quill piece, which we saw in like the Indian Western sets way back in the day. And you also get that 1x2 tile print for that letter. Moving up a level here, we have the Gryffindor dormitory room for both Ron and Harry. You can plop them in here. You also get those hinge plates from both the top and the bottom there, so then you can actually open this up a little bit. I mean, it is a little unfortunate that there isn't any floor here between that, but I mean, it, it's nice that they give you some extra space and you can easily close it up to actually create the tower. I think that's a really interesting feature inclusion. We get a hidden book over here in that green color that doesn't feature any exclusive prints and doesn't feature anything inside it, though it is exclusive in this color to this particular set. You also get two of these little potion bottles here. I wonder if this is supposed to represent those sweets that we saw them eating in the beginning of the film, though of course they probably didn't have that reference material. We also get two beds, again one for Harry and one for Ron. You can remove their accessory and just plop them in the bed area as you see fit. Now as we move up the tower, things just get weirder and weirder. We have this room that features two of these torches. I don't know what's supposed to be happening up here. I mean, it's just labeled as a random room that you can just place your characters in, I suppose. And as we move to the attic up here, we have scabbers, or at least they just call it a rat, though I'm just gonna say it's scabbers because we're in the Gryffindor tower, I suppose, that this is just going to be scabbers. If you want to make it scabbers, you can make it scabbers, otherwise it's just a random rat up in the attic. And for the last three builds included, we have the main Hogwarts clock tower, which is surprisingly bigger than the one that we got in 2019, which probably means it's definitely bigger than the one that we're going to get this year in 2022. Watch out for my comparison video between all three of the sets coming sometime in March. But to start us off, I might as well show you that this is indeed three different sections that can be separated. As you can see there, we have these Technic pins that are supposed to be featured on these ends, though I'm just going to leave them from the very back of the actual clock tower here, that allow you to connect these two sections off to the side right here. It also gives you a much better look at the gear system and everything that's actually going on within this particular build. As we move up to the top, you can see that we have a small little owlry going on over here where we have a plain black and a plain white owl. This was again before they had prints for the owls. And these are also the older owl molds compared to the ones that we see nowadays. You have some clip piece connections in order to get the angling right here for like the rooftop. You can also take a better look with lighting there when it comes to removing those. Again, we get those gear systems as we move down. This gear right here is the one that you want to turn in order to make things work. This gear you can turn if you don't want to turn this gear. This will actually control everything manually. This controls everything using the actual special system that was created for this set. Well, actually it wasn't created for this set, but we're just going to say close enough. 
We also have these two little Technic pieces that are sticking out from each side, which also really help when it comes to controlling the mechanism. Again, it's a little hard to actually get everything to work the way that you might want it to, but I'm going to try and show you guys the best I can. So before we take a look at that mechanism, I thought we'd take a quick look at the front of the clock tower. From the very front, we get two exclusive prints to the set, one on this smaller dish piece and then one on this larger dish piece, which actually features the clock that doesn't really feature time as well as maybe you would want it to. I mean, it is supposed to be in this sort of like spinning mechanism, I guess, so then you can't really tell what is going on when you're actually looking at this, but I just would have liked to see them put some more correct numbers, kind of like we saw within the 2019, and what we're actually gonna again see that piece return within the 2022 version of the clock tower. As we move down, we have some stained glass using those one by one pieces right there in red, blue, and purple, which I think is an interesting color scheme. Again, a little bit of that sand green, which we don't see from the roofs, might I add. We see a lot more of that dark gray being used. And as we move down to the very bottom, down here we have these larger doors, which only appear in one other set from like Knight's Kingdom or Castle or something like that. You can easily open these up. To reveal that we have some bars over the main entrance to Hogwarts there, which I think is really nice that they actually included that. There is a way to actually lift this up, which we'll show in the gear mechanism. That also allows you to spin the clock up there as well. I'm probably not going to commentate through this particular part. I'm just going to state that this particular feature should stay down. This particular feature I'm going to lift up from the side over here. I'm going to lift that up so then it actually touches the gears inside to lift the bottom gate area over here, which is probably one of the harder parts to make sure that it works. And we're going to spin the gear that I showed earlier on. And off we go. And as you can see, the mechanism pulled up the gate and the pendulum swung and also the clock face turned, which is what's supposed to happen. Again, if you want to drop the gate, we have this little gear over here that you just got to place back down. That'll drop the gate back to the floor and you can easily close up the doors. We're going to take a look at this feature from the back, so then you can also see how the gate is actually pulled up right here using this string piece, which is attached using another gear system inside. Again, you can see that it's a rather wonky feature. I think that it could have been done better if it was done more in a modern take from LEGO. Of course, this is a feature that I would love to see them try and implement again, though of course not any time in the near future because we're going to get another clock tower in March. And to be completely honest, I don't want to see another one for at least another two to three years. Looking at the right side of the Hogwarts clock tower build, working our way from the bottom up. We have cobweb connected using those clip piece connections. We get a look at the basement down there with the potions, the dungeons down there. We also get some windows as we move up using those great pieces. I really like getting those. We also have some building on the side with this long brown one by one plate piece. We also have a bit of a balcony going on over here connected using that Technic feature down here. And as we move up, we get the dark gray for the roofs, which I find rather interesting, leading to yet another window up here, and we also get a bat. Now, working our way through the interior, starting from the bottom again over here, you can see that we have somewhat of a basement dungeons area, or like a potions classroom, as it's mentioned, through Lego Shop at Home, where we have this print returning from back in the 2001 through 2003 sets, but it's in the regular brown color. This is the only time that it's appeared in that particular color, so that I find really interesting. I really like getting that in a more modern color scheme, 
We also have some potion bottles up there. It's also hiding a clip piece with one of these brass keys, which I really like getting. We get two of those. The other key is actually hidden in the other side of the castle, which we'll get to again very soon. We have a frog down here. I would think that's probably Trevor or something. And then we also get the hinge bricks right here. So you can actually move this section back and forth as you please. Now, as we move to this side section, we also get some stairs, which also should somewhat connect to the stairs that we get in the other build, which we're gonna talk about very soon. But moving us up to the next level, we have a study room, or at least that's what it's called within the Lego Shop at Home description. We happen to get a trap door here, which you can easily remove this glowing spider, this translucent spider, to make your character drop to the dungeons below, which I think is really interesting. The only thing I don't like about this is that it's hard to really set back up correctly. And also when it comes to that axle piece running through that Technic connection is that we don't really get this piece aligning with the rest of the studs. That's my only other really complaint. For this particular section, we get a printed 2x2 two two tile in that sand green color, which is one that we've seen many times even in the Chamber of Secrets set from 2002. We have some torches, again that balcony area if you want to have a character standing over there. And as we move up, to the attic area we have a trunk and inside this trunk we can open it up and we have an accessory of this translucent purple magnifying glass which is something that we've seen before in other lego harry potter sets so it's nothing really too special but it's nice to see still the same that they're still including these weird types of accessories within the hogwarts castles we get another torch and again that bat and you can also see the clip piece connection for the angling of the roof over here and also the windows, the back of the windows, as we move throughout this particular build. Another thing that I might as well mention as we're finishing up is that we get this Technic connection, which allows you to connect this piece to the actual big part of the Hogwarts clock tower front, right there using that Technic connection. And lastly, we have probably the most interesting section of the clock tower. We have the left section. Starting our way from the bottom, working our way up again. We have another cobweb, this time with this translucent yellowish green spider on it. Clip piece connection down there for that. We also happen to get another translucent spider in red over here. Same sort of building techniques when it comes to the windows, though we get a little bit of a different situation as we move up. The tower here, we have this sort of dark gray roofing over here where we also have, again, the building on the side for that piece. Kind of similar situation as we saw for the other build, just we get that extra bit of roofing, some different windows right there, not using the typical window panes that we see down here. We have another different Technic connection over here just to add another section of the tower, which is removable, so you can actually take a better look inside there if you really want to. And again, as we move up, we have some similar building techniques when it comes to the top of the roofing, just reversed right there which is pretty nice to see that we have the dark gray roofs again and that little bit of sand grain. It's just really interesting to see the way that they mixed it back in 2004. So bringing us back down to look at the interior space, again, we have this bottom basement area, which I this is probably the thing that confuses me the most, to be completely honest, when it comes to this set. This is supposed to represent Dumbledore's office, where we have a chair for Dumbledore to sit in in this red and dark red color. I just find it really odd you get the jumper plates so you can sit Dumbledore in that area. Again, we get that other key piece just like from the other build that we just looked at. We have some different hinge connections right here and also the stairs at a more proper level for your minifigures to start climbing them. This is supposed to connect to the other stair piece which I'll show again towards the end of the video when I actually connect all three of these pieces. But as I said, I just find it really, really odd that this is supposed to represent Dumbledore's office at the very bottom floor. It's just really weird the way that they decided to do that. Moving up to the next level, I might as well move this side section so we can take a better look inside here when it comes to lighting. We can see that we have a small desk area where we have some quill and ink. 
We have two spots to sit your minifigures. Wish that they left those studded to make it easier for your characters to sit, but no matter, those are supposed to represent the red chairs in Professor Trelawney's classroom, I suppose. I don't really know, because we get another section of Professor Trelawney's office as we move up, where we're supposed to see this crystal ball that happens to have a skull in it. This can also rotate on one of those spinny plate pieces if you want to. You get the print on the headpiece for the skeleton. You have some teacups for tea leaves, one in blue, one in that translucent pink. And then we also have two of these potion bottles. Again, a torch right there just for pretend lighting. And if you're interested, we get that clip piece connection in order to get the angling of the roof over here, as you see from the front. Now, moving us back down here, we have that other section, as I mentioned, is connected using these Technic connections. When you look inside here, we get that blackboard print, which actually comes in one other set from 2001. So that's pretty cool to see this piece return. And from the other side of that print, on the spinny plate, we have one of those skeletons, which has a typical skeleton head print, and you also get the flexibility of the arms, like you see for the Dementors in this set, and also the clip piece connections for the little feet. You can turn the head if you really want to. And it's just meant to be one of those special hidden features that LEGO really loved putting in the LEGO Harry Potter sets back in the day. I don't know why it's in Professor Trelawney's classroom, or maybe this is supposed to represent the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom. Not 100% sure, but you can take a look at the writing on this board if you're interested in that kind of thing. Again, we get that in another set from back in 2001, and you can just put that right there in the technicals. Now, as I mentioned, these two pieces that we just looked at connects to the main section of the Hogwarts Clock Tower. Using those Technic pins over there, you can snap them in. And there you go, you have the main section of the Hogwarts Clock Tower. Now, turning this around so we can take a better look at the interior all combined. There's a lot going on here, and I actually really appreciate everything that's happening. When it comes to the stairs, as I mentioned before, we get the ability to actually combine these slightly in the middle right here. So you can have your characters climbing up the stairs over here. And then as the stair moves over here, you can climb up this stair, which will swing back in to take you up here if you want to. Don't know how you're supposed to go between rooms or anything, but I mean... Whatever, it's fine. Maybe, I guess, you can do something like that, but it doesn't really work in the normal world. It's kind of confusing, as I said, but it's LEGO's, I guess, first, second, third attempt for making these moving staircases, which probably isn't even accurate in the first place to this particular situation. So overall, for $90, is this set worth it? I mean, you get a pretty well-rounded minifigure selection, all of them are exclusive, you get Professor Sybil Trelawney for the very first time in LEGO form, Hermione comes with her Time Turner, you get some Dementors, which is nice if you got any of the other sets during the time period. Though, the one fault that I see in this set has to be with the build, of course, it's outdated from 2004. LEGO has given us so many great building techniques over the years, don't get me wrong, I love the feature for the clock tower here where you can turn that gear, have the gate raise, have the pendulum swing, and have the face of the clock turn. But then again, some of the rooms in here aren't that accurate, which I, I guess is fine for the time period just because they were going off a lot more book references, especially when it comes to minifigures that are included in this set. I think this is a very fun play set. It's not much of a display set. It's not really that accurate, I guess, to the source material. They're is again lots of room for improvement. I'm excited to do my comparison to the 2019 and the 2022 versions of the Hogwarts Clock Tower to show all three of these together. This is the biggest of the three models and I think for the time period it's just a really unique and fun set and I'm really happy to now own it in my collection. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say for this video. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this set. Also remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you never upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now and I will see you next time. Bye!